Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Visby. Today I'm very happy to be here with you because we are going to start a, a series of videos and tutorials inspired by the fall, which is my favorite season, inspired by pumpkins, by warm palette, warm color palette. So today we're going to actually do some watercolor traditional painting. We're going to use a pencil for sketching. I'm going to use my little watercolor journal. If you have your journal, use your journal. If you have watercolor paper, use that. If you don't, you can also try to do this activity on mixed media paper. If the paper is pretty thick and strong, it will definitely hold the water. Of course, the blending might look a little different on yours, but there is no reason uh, for you to not paint on a mixed media paper. Then uh, I'm gonna use my watercolors, a cup with the water, and I will use a couple of brushes, a small and extra small. My journal is small, so if you have a bigger piece, I suggest you to cut or frame the space in a little smaller so you can take care of details and focus more on the quality and then on the quantity and you won't feel overwhelmed by such a long practice. So today we're gonna do like, we're gonna review some nice tips and I can guide you step by step into a nice and more, I would say, traditional painting um, we are gonna do more on like a, a design that is more realistic so definitely different from what my zentangle my patterns my colorful abstract art but then stay tuned because the following week we're gonna do instead another type of pumpkins with other type of medias and materials so you're gonna really really love it so I'm gonna switch the camera and we can start please consider to subscribe to my channel if you're already subscribed, please share with your friends, ask other people to join, ask me to join the Facebook group, Art with Miss B, so we can really strengthen this community that we are building here, also like uh, uh, creating this beautiful safe space for us to share what we create with my tutorial. Um, make sure to follow me on Instagram and there is a link uh, in uh, the home page of YouTube, on the home page of YouTube, and that might help me to grow faster and so I can get some deals with some art suppliers, so I can get some art supplies and I can keep doing more and more videos with you. So I'm gonna switch the camera and we are ready to start. Okay, friends, this is my small watercolor journal. I bought this actually at the local Hobby Lobby. You can find them at Hobby Lobby, definitely Michael's sometimes maybe a target a Walmart or online on Amazon, okay? The paper has to be, as you see, very, very thick and very strong and also has this beautiful texture. Once again, if you're using mixed media paper, you're not gonna have this texture, your paper will be smoother, but that doesn't mean that your project won't be successful and beautiful. I'm gonna take this away and we're gonna start the sketching. So usually what I do to be able to set my object in a plane properly, I'm gonna kind of... Uh, trace a line of the horizon, do it freehand, and you might barely see this line, but I really need it to be as light as possible. Mostly when we work with watercolor, we want our lines with a pencil to really blend them with the watercolor. This line divide my space, and so I can understand where do I wanna put my uh, pumpkins. So I'm gonna start to put one below the line of the horizon, and I will basically start and trace this sort of a irregular oval, don't think too much. And then you're going to add sections, both sides. And remember that pumpkins, they're natural, right? So we don't want to have to add the perfect circle or the perfect oval. That is very typical of kids, right? That they, um, they do the pumpkins with the circle, but then as I say to my student, little by little we learn a better, right? So this one could be a pumpkin like this. We can do a little swirl, double it. You can do a part of the leaves, you know, and everything else will happen with the watercolor. Then uh, to make sure that we have some kind of three-dimensionality, we're gonna use positioning and we're gonna use some overlapping also and also sizing. So let's say that the pumpkins here is gonna be definitely bigger compared to this one. So it's gonna give this optical illusion of something that, you know, it's three-dimensional, right? And so whatever is closer to the foreground It should be bigger, right? Whatever is farther is gonna be smaller and smaller. 
So this one is definitely beautiful big pumpkins. One and here two. We're gonna put this one in the center. We don't have to copy exactly. We wanna have some variety in the shape, you know, leaves, no leaves, whatever. Maybe we can do this. We are over here. And now we can do some overlappings. Maybe this time we're gonna do like a different shade pumpkin. So elongated oval. We make it thinner. And as you can see, I'm not doing one single line, but I do this sort of a sketchy, very dynamic line. leave here as well maybe a second one over here we're gonna start to get closer to the line of the horizon so we're gonna keep adding other pumpkins right smaller right because we are going backward we are going closer to the line of the horizon this line is so light that if it bothers you you can definitely erase it Otherwise, it's going to really blend into the coloring, into the watercolor. So you really don't need to do almost anything at all. Some overlapping again. The overlapping is such an op you know, a beautiful device, very easy to use, that will create the optical illusion of something receding, going, you know. With the pencil, you can also add some value which means that you're adding some shading, uh, that value you will be able to see it also when you do the watercolor and definitely it's gonna help and increase uh, that three-dimensionality of the piece. We're gonna do also some cast of shadow, like, you know, the reflection, but most of all, we're gonna create a little texture with our pencil, right? Before we go with watercolor. At the end, we probably, because you know that I love, um, to do the extra uh, fine outline with a Sharpie or any brand that you have available. I really like it, but it's not something that we have to do it all the time. If you wanna leave it extremely realistic, you can leave it just with a pencil work and with uh, the watercolor. And now maybe to create this, let's say that this is a pumpkin patch right so we can see very well the details of these pumpkins this one a little less and then less and less right the farther we go the tiniest and the smallest will be the pumpkins and at this point really you start to lose almost all the detail so you just have to really do, at this point, a very sketchy type of circle, and it will be more than enough. You can still play with some overlapping over here and differentiate the shape, because as we say, pumpkins are natural. Now we're gonna go over the line, and maybe we can do it a little more sketchy, so it doesn't look so perfect. Then, because we're going maybe very far away, we can have a little fence you know pretend that we are in a countryside right so we can add some element that will definitely amplify this illusion of space and we create some visual interest so let's say that this is like the edge of our pumpkin patch we have this fan that we plant here don't make them too regular less perfect the better right and then behind uh, we can have a tree for example right this tree is gonna be still pretty big definitely bigger right compared to the pumpkin so it's gonna make sense it's not going to be super detailed though because it's not in the foreground it's still in the background Look what I do. I say to my kids, pretend that you're doing a very sketchy clouds. 
this is how you will fulfill like the tree and then everything else with everything else will happen with the painting some roots maybe another one over here so we're gonna use also sort of a rule of third for which you divide your space into a tita toe this is how i say the kids and the element that goes on the intersection of this imaginary line will create definitely a better visual effect and will make your composition more balanced and more interesting so as you see like it's not that difficult we're still using lines right different type of lines sketchy lines scribbling lines we're just playing with dimension with positioning and we create some nice uh, visual interest in placing the details the element of our painting in the proper position following the rule of third which is a very common rule used for visual composition also in photography then in the very very background if you don't want to have all sky and you want to give yourself opportunity to use a variety of colors so a more very various pa palette you can do this beautiful nice heel and these heels you know once again they could have crops so you can add some nice texture and then you can play around with different colors just because you want to have a as i say multiple elements that can contribute to the visual interest of your composition gives opportunity for you to play play with different colors play with different texture and make your uh, work you know more uh, interesting and with a better rhythm and movement now we start the painting you can start from the background you can start from the tree you can start from the foreground what i will do i will start from the pumpkins this time and then you are ready you know of course you are able to make your own choices about the colors in this case i'm gonna kind of because i'm doing more realistic and more traditional we're gonna kind of follow the indication of nature right so we're gonna have a nice orange brownish yellowish greenish and I love to use a little intense color palette. It's just because I feel that when we paint, regardless of what is the formal rule, we never we can we should never forget about what we really like to do. So if you love a very intense color palette, even if it's not completely realistic and it's more on the impressionistic or side, go for it. Because at the end, you need to like what you do and you need to really like what you see. It needs to make you feel good. I'm not filling all the space as you notice because maybe I want to play with some green. I want to play with some other uh, color. So I'm going to give myself a little chance to do so. Definitely, I'm going to make the orange a little darker here in the center. Here, I'm going to do a little more instead. lighter darker here and the secret as we always say with the watercolor you don't need to uh, really press at all okay so remember that as soon as the brush touch the paper and release the color that's it you let it set it's gonna dry pretty quickly if you want to go work over that but you don't need to do it all at once. You don't need to press so much. You need to kind of be gentle and delicate, right? Remember that although it's a resistant uh, paper, it's still paper and we're working on top of it with water. So we need to be gentle and considerate. If your watercolor are bleeding a little bit outside, it's the beauty of watercolor. So really don't stress yourself at all. Embrace it, let it set, and there is always the opportunity to paint a little bit over. Now I'm going to grab some of the brown and I'm going to start to kind of create some uh, spots on the pumpkins because as we say, these are natural elements, right? So we don't want them to be too perfect. Less perfect actually the better, right? We want them to have some imperfection. And always, uh, this is a, a little practice, uh, maybe a little too black. You can blend it back down as I'm doing. So play with some color, see what happens. Don't be afraid. 
just have fun. I'm going to use a sort of a gentle green. Maybe I'm going to try to dark it up a little bit for the leaves. So I always invite you to use a different uh, tint and shade of the same color, right? So let's say that we have the color, the hue is green. We know that we have a different tones and tints, right, of the same color. And if you don't have the same palette that I have and your watercolor palette is more limited to primary and secondary, remember that you can mix them, right? You can mix them on a plate, you can mix them on the palette itself, and so you can create more color. If you have the white, if you have the gray, you can mix it to the color and it's going to give you more, uh, like more colors that you can use, right? And you can have fun with. Now we're going to switch it to this one. Now we're going to do this nice and nice in orange. If you think that your brush is too wet, uh, tap it on the piece of paper. In this case, because we have a specific design that we did with the pencil, we want to have a, some sort of control on the water. So you don't have to um, kind of do it too dry but you want to have some like a nice blending with the water but you also want to control it a little bit i'm gonna mix some green and i like it when you see green mix with mixes with the orange let me just fix a little bit this light better feel that i want to grab some brown And you do this tiny, tiny little brush stroke, right? I personally like when um, you see some white, you know, it's not completely saturated. That's the beauty of watercolor, which is completely different from when we do markers, when we have a total saturation, which is also great, you know, depending on what we want to achieve with our piece they are both amazing media and we can do so much with them putting some yellow here also something to keep in mind that is very different well in the marker as well but we cannot really light it up that much with the watercolor so don't go too dark because you always had the opportunity to add some more but if you instead um go to dark that is not really way to go back this one i took like a sort of a burgundy a little bit of red brownish i'm gonna use this one also to spoil a little bit the pumpkins and create some nice uh, color value so some nice darker spot and then we're gonna keep going with the rest of our pumpkins. You can have more pumpkins if you want. I did something that I was, you know, able kind of to accomplish in a decent amount of time. And once again, I am filling the spaces without really being too precise because then I want to maybe go with a little bit of this brown on some of them, right? and create some nice color pattern. Just feel that the perfect, perfect uh, activity for the fall. Um, here where I live in Utah, actually this week has been pretty, pretty hot, but beautiful. The foliage is happening, but I'm pretty sure that in Northeast, uh, New England, oh my, you're already in, uh, uh, like, uh, in this foliage, in the middle of this gorgeous foliage, and so this is the perfect activity to do, to embrace the change of the season. So including uh, a lot of brown, nice and warm, a little darker just barely touching the paper and that's it. Now you can proceed. Probably I'm gonna do actually 
the heel so then I can do the tree then I will do the fence and then I will go background and foreground so let's go for the heels we're gonna do some nice green but a little like a not too too green you know what I mean we're gonna make some light brown some yellow with the light green and see what happened I there you go and remember you don't have to color with just one color if we create the patches it's much better right because we create this optical illusion that also the light is sitting uh, the ground and the piece in a different way don't worry if you're going over the lines that we trace with a pencil we can retrieve it later with an extra fine marker it's totally fine A little bit of darker brown maybe to go near the tree and once again don't be afraid to, to leave white spaces the white is kind of the light that is hitting our piece and as i say before with watercolor it's kind of difficult if we go too dark it's going to be really hard for us to go back that is not really way like if you have a white watercolor it won't work over unless you use a white acrylics or something like that but we are just you know if you want to stick with watercolor you need to just be careful because if you do it too much it's a little difficult very almost impossible to go back very gentle the pumpkins are at this point kind of dry if you didn't use too much water so even if you touch them it doesn't really nothing happen and once again if that something happen it's okay just let's embrace it and it's gonna be fine and it's gonna be gorgeous at the end maybe here we have a little more brown because maybe you know the ground is different that heel If you want to retrieve a little bit green, maybe you can tap on the green, this time with a little less water, and you can just gently tap on top of that brown to enhance and support texture. Over here, very dark. And now let's see, let's say that this one is also another pumpkin patch because I really want to create this connection with this beautiful orange. Maybe you can tip in the, oh, I added it too much. You can tap your brush in the orange and have it like on those stripes that I did with a pencil. If you didn't do it, you can just do it on the paper directly. Now it looks very very bright but wait for it we're gonna grab a little bit of that yellow the, uh, the yellow green I'm gonna blend it so we're gonna have like more of a brown and you go and you go between right so you smooth down you kind of turn off the brightness of the orange we're gonna let it dry and let it set because then I wanna go with some more maybe dots of oranges and stuff like that. Now in this case, I wanna go back to a darker green and have a nice contrast between this light green and darker green once again do your experiment you do you and if you don't like something first of all we can embrace it and say okay this is how it went this time and this is what i want to do different in the next time or you can just let it dry and work it over with some you know watercolor and change that specific uh, um, tint or tones that you don't like and make it look more like the one that you wanted or you had in mind 
what I like also that watercolor really teach us humility, right? Because there is, of course, that we can control the more we know them and the more we can be intentional, but also that is the beautiful surprise that come. And it is, you know, what it is. And it teaches us, you know, new routes, new roads, new paths, new possibility that maybe we didn't even know that they existed. And maybe we're going to love them at the end. Who knows, right? So I'm going to feel a little more the white space on the bottom. And I'm going to let this dry completely because I want to tap it with some dots of green to make sure that there is an alternation between maybe what are what the pumpkins are and um, the dirt and the grass, uh, you know, this beautiful fall uh, countryside scene. Now I'm going to do the sky because I want to make sure that I go also between uh, the branches of the tree and then I will do the trees. For the sky, you can do whatever you want. If it's a sunset, probably those colors should be a little darker, a little darker feature, maybe a little bluish tone, and this one could be pretty dark. In my case, I think that I'm going to just do a blue sky uh, and it's, you know, daylight. And of course, if you're doing sunset, you're going to use a completely different palette. Uh, very, very warm and very intense, orange, pink, stuff like that, right? Place some of the blue here and then I gently spread the rest. And just using a very light blue. And then sometimes I just tip the brush in the water and work over gently, bringing basically the blue around. And the rest is the water that does its, its magic and makes the color look darker and lighter, darker and lighter. And that is the beauty of watercolor. Let me move this one out of my way. Gently you go along your line of the horizon. And once again, if you go over the trees and the branches, it's really not a big deal because you will be able to cover this blue with the green. And then I just gently, basically spread it out. here gonna have some nice blue in the trees so be as the illusion right that the light filter I'm gonna do a little darker here as well and then with this brush I'm gonna finish the last part of my line of the horizon put some water in it tap the color tap the water and gently gently brush it want to make sure that in this case the brush is wet enough and so we can really spread this beautiful color we can let it blend on the paper and so we don't see any brush strokes at the end right sometimes you want to see the brush strokes you want to see some texture in that case we use a little bit a little less water so we can still see even if the color when the color mixes and stuff like that but we can still see the little brush strokes and the texture sometimes we want something like in this case pretty smooth with some variation but not too much and so you're going to be extremely gentle on the paper but also a little more generous with the amount of water on your brush and then very gently you're gonna spread it out and rework on some of the area then it's beautiful because as i say you see you have the you know maybe the feeling of some light and gentle clouds perfect now we are on to our trees nice green and the tree i will have some green but also some orange because as the 
season is changing also their trees are changing and they uh, gift us of this gorgeous gorgeous color variation that are you know they're just fantastic to look at and they are just beautiful so we're gonna play with a couple of different green tap you see i'm just tapping 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 nice little tapping and then you can start to incorporate some nice orange you can mix it with the same green so you don't even clean the brush so you can kind of get that because i have so much warmth and warmth i want to still keep something in between so some cold tones that create a nice balance in my color palette but feel free to do you and if you want to load them with orange red go for it tapping 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 let the water do its magic beautiful you can overlap with some of the brown then we're gonna let it set and if you want to go at the end with some yellow that would be awesome we're just gonna let it set and dry so we're gonna switch to the other trees then we're gonna do the trunk and this that and then we can go back and work on it before we do our um, foreground once again I'm gonna pick some darker green, medium green. I will add some green nice because I want that little contrast between the background of the hill and this tree. So I wanna be able to really see it. Beautiful. Maybe some green is here and is here as well. And now we're gonna start with a nice orange. I didn't clean the brush, so this is why it's still kind of green. I'm going to pick a darker orange, stronger. There you go. And you just proceed like this, tapping, 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 gently, overlapping. Go around the blue. If you want to go with a little bit of red, maybe. You can, beautiful. As I say, I feel that the full color palette is just the best. It's really the best. A little bit more, I wanna add this one and a darker orange. I wanna warm it up very, very much over here. There you go. I want this beautiful contrast with this, this orange and the blue of the sky, which are also complementary colors on the color wheel. And now really here, I'm gonna tap in the orange, light orange, and I'm going to warm up more this brown. There you go. beautiful now actually i saw and i noticed that i forgot to add a little bit of blue in here so i'm gonna go and correct that you know i'm gonna do the trunk of the tree you can choose any brown that you want i'm gonna use a pretty you know medium darker brown nice and bold that create a nice contrast with the blue sky Once again, you can add the branches on top of the blue. And then you spread it down. If you go outside the line that you trace with the pencil, don't worry about it at all. Because you can reshape anything and I'm going definitely over and then super tiny, 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 extra fine branches to create a little more visual interest. 
with the background that is a blue in the sky i'm gonna make it a little larger actually beautiful and spread out the roots all the way i'm gonna bring this brown also here just gonna give me a beautiful nice castor shadow for the pumpkins there too and the background over here so i'm gonna spread it without even taking the color again just spread it and use it to color this area behind the tree so i i set already kind of a darker cast a shadow now on to the second tree let me move this paper i know sometimes i'm so focused on uh, what i am doing that i barely notice uh, if the camera moves and stuff like that because and that is also the power of painting right we're all into our practice uh, um, And it's, it is not an easy task to kind of talk, explain, and focus on what you're doing. I need to be careful because maybe the brush is a little too wet. I suggest you to go with a little less so you can control it better. But in this one, I'm going to do a little less, like less branches. And I will tap the color. And actually, I will still do the same that I did on the other, just spreading out this brown in the background. I like that, be like below the tree, we have this darker color. Now we're going to do the fence. For the fence, I actually will mix a darker brown with some black. I definitely want to do it a little different from the, uh, the trees, just to create some variety, right? So I really would go like this, and I don't care if they are not perfect, they are not precise, they are, I just don't care. I just do this. There is some bleeding also in the color. Perfect. We're going to kind of retouch it. A little bit darker here. Voila. Now with this extremely, maybe I'm gonna use uh, this very, very, very tiny brush. I'm gonna barely wet the brush and then I can uh, control, you see, and add the tiny little strokes to add more texture and on the tree, on the trunks of the trees and maybe on the fence. We can put some gray and black, wet the brush again. And then we can do the, we can go on top of the lines that we trace for the fence. Once again, you go slow. If it doesn't come perfect, it's, it, it really doesn't matter. The more imperfect is the piece, the better. Mostly when we do something like this, so bucolic uh, in watercolors, right? Of course, don't go on top of the pumpkins because the pumpkins are before, like in front of the fence. So that would be not accurate. And now we're gonna have fun coloring the, uh, the foreground. I'm gonna switch it to still a small, a small medium. And once again, it's up to you if you wanna have all brownish, if you wanna keep the warm, if you wanna have some patches of green, this is what I would do. I would get some patches of green, maybe a light green, and then some nice light brown. I can mix the green with the brown and see what happened. So I don't wanna have a monochrome uh, foreground. I'm going to really gently 
spread some of the color. Definitely I want maybe something a little darker. Then we're gonna dark it up again because we wanna create a nice cast of shadow so we can create some darker brown. And maybe with the darker brown, we can go here, we can go close to the pumpkin to create a sort of a shadow projector. And always think that the alternation and the balance between darker and a lighter tone create that beautiful visual interest and the movement, right? If we use the same color and they are not color variation, then the piece really is not going to be that interesting. It's going to be pretty boring to want to look at. So just don't be afraid to play and mix uh, and once again and let the color and let the water do its job surprise you sometimes in a good way sometimes not in a good way but definitely it's unexpected and then you need to kind of reason right and say okay what can i do now with this that happened how can i change this or how can i incorporate it into my picture how can i um you know embrace it uh, and make something with it so we're gonna mix nicely some green you can rework over as i say i will go extremely dark next to the bottom right i will go probably also darker a little bit over here on these pumpkins and remember that you can do also some nice texture on the pumpkins to make it look a little more, a little less perfect and a little more natural. Even here, I will go a little darker and I will work a little bit on top of this brown to spread it out. I will go on top of the pumpkins as well to break this orange. Mm -hmm. Then maybe with some darker green and see what happens. I'm gonna have some patches. There you go. A little brighter, right? So it doesn't look as sad, you know, sometimes a fall piece can be also a little melancholic, a little sad. No, I want this to be warm, to suggest that idea, the beautiful countryside when you, I don't know, you sit down and you look at a pumpkin patch and you relax and you really feel blessed about this gorgeous planet, this paradise that we live in. And reconnect with nature uh, reconnect with really all the blessing that we have in our life and that we have in our life on this planet as human and sometimes society tends to forget and we focus on the wrong things but we have so much so much to you know feel grateful for nice and light over here Gently spread it, rework on the transition, and then you can cut, kind of grab a little bit more of that. I have a sort of a matte color, which is not a brown, not a green, a matte color. And you can actually, you see, you can tap if you like the to see the colors blending. You can just gently apply a generous amount of water, tap on the previous layer. Here I like that we can see a little bit more the, of the uh, brush texture, the brush strokes. Then I'm going to take the small one again, the tiny, tiny, tiny. This is so beautiful, really like it. I'm gonna get the darker brown. This time I make sure that instead you don't have too much water and I'm going to kind of go over the swirl. 
ankle cover, the stamp of the pumpkin. This one is nice. You can go like on the the lines so that you trace with a pencil. Kind of to redefine that shape a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much. Mostly in the one on the back. Remember, they are really, really far away. So it's more like an optical illusion created by those strokes and those colors than the real thing. Now I'm gonna take some green, little, little water, and I'm gonna do some tapping between the, this orange, just to break the orange a little more and to make it look more like of a natural, far away, very far away pumpkin patch. Maybe you can also rework the line of the horizon on top of just tapping, just because you don't want to add the perfect right line of the horizon but let's say that there are some bushes some plants right some tree extremely far away you want to recreate that spots of color once again a little bit of green here i'm doing some bushes i'm adding a little more interest i'm gonna cover some of that white and i actually like uh, the some white spots because it looks like uh, the light is hitting that you know piece and it's created this beautiful mesmerizing feeling speckles of light very gently you see i'm barely barely touching the paper maybe with the light green i can do some more texture over here to reinforce the idea that this is crops, right? So it's not flat, uh, it's not super smooth, it's a little bumpy ground. And a little bit here, always with this very, like in this case, I'm controlling the amount of water. You can just stop with a darker green and you can do as many details if you wanna add, right? But I'm going to add some grass texture. And in this case, you just go barely touch the paper and do these tiny, 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 tiny little strokes. Once again, it's not going to be huge and it's not going to be too tall because it's not in the foreground, it's on the middle ground. So we still have a pretty good view, but we cannot see all the smallest details, right? So... And once again, if we think about it, and it's a little mind blowing, there are just type of lines and type of strokes that can really create this, um, they create this optical illusion of grass, of different texture, and it's fascinating. If you wanna bring some grass over here, you will just tap barely, mostly, you know, sometimes it happens, the grass go, and definitely, helps again with this uh, idea of illusion of space, illusion of three-dimensionality and going over the leaves so just to make them a little darker. I tapped the brush into the water because it was almost too dry. So you need to have, a, you need to find your way with the water, right? You wanna make sure that you have enough water to move the brush smoothly on the paper, but not too much if you need to control it. I like to put some grass here around the, the pumpkins and then you can go really kind of cleaning basically what is left on your brush, adding some spots of green. It's really, really pretty. And it's up to you to decide when you want to stop. You know what I mean? It's really your style, your personality. You can add more and more and more and more. And sometimes it's difficult to understand, okay, where do I stop? I feel that once you feel that the piece is cohesive and has all the important mm -hmm. elements, you can uh, stop. I'm going to take this one. Uh, just, I want to kind of define it just slightly more. The edges of this pumpkin, just because it's pretty close to us 
and uh, I don't want to miss uh, important detail a little bit of green and I feel that my piece is all done I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye okay guys we did it I really enjoyed this little watercolor sessions this is a beautiful pumpkin patch this is a beautiful fall inspired the season inspired landscape i hope that you enjoyed as you see um with little steps step by step proceeding in the right way understanding the pressure of your hands and the brush on the paper understanding more and more the amount of water that you need to use when you want the color to bleed and blend or when you want to control because you are creating and working some uh, fine details or some texture it's basically just an optical illusion that you create right with some brush strokes and watercolors so i hope that you love it and as I say before, subscribe, share, like, send me your comment, share your experience with me painting, um, follow me on Instagram, ask me to join our Facebook group. This community is really important to me and it is growing and I couldn't be happier and I couldn't be more grateful for every single one of you. I wish you a wonderful day and we see you next week with another beautiful, completely different and super colorful pumpkins. Ciao! Thank you.